my god what are you doing oh you are looking for a book on types of animals but you cannot behave like this in a library let me help you arrange these back on the shelves well well now let's see what is it that you wanted a particular book huh please don't be so disappointed although a library has thousands of books it is pretty easy to find a book yes believe me in a library books are sorted and organized according to their topics and authors so you can quickly get them when you want you might have seen this kind of classification in supermarkets as well in fact you organize your stuff at home too when things are kept neatly according to their categories do you know that scientists have organized us all the living things into categories as well oh yes they have let me tell you all about classification of living things long ago all living things were classified as plants or animals where will you put your picture in this classification wonderful all living things that made their own food from sunlight and did not move for plants and all living things that got their energy from eating plants and moved were animals Things that did not eat plants but ate other smaller animals were also classified as animals. Yes, they are all animals. Wait, a mushroom looks quite like a plant. and does not move but it cannot make its own food do you know a mushroom takes its food from the surroundings it hmm i don't think it quite belongs in the animal group either it does not actively move looking for food <laughs> like other animals <laughs> oh don't be so upset Even the best scientists were confused for a long time about where to put mushrooms and other fungi like it. So they made a new group called fungi. You can stick your mushroom picture in here. Well done. Now every living thing you can see with your eyes is taken care of. That leaves us with very minute microscopic living things that we can't even see. These living things are still very small. Let's make them slightly bigger. Are they plants or animals or fungi? These things are so different from anything we see around us that it is difficult to classify them as such. They are simple creatures with a single cell. So, scientists divided them into two groups. One called Monera with very very simple single cell creature. In fact, so simple that they do not even have a nucleus a lot of bacteria are moneras the other microorganism ones with a nucleus and more evolved cells were called protists although they are single cells too they are much larger and complicated than the moneras So then, five places to classify all the living things in. These are called kingdoms. Really? <laughs> Do you remember how many kingdoms the living things are classified into? The plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, the fungi kingdom, the monera kingdom, and finally the protist kingdom. <laughs> Do you think these kingdoms can go to war with each other? So which kingdom are you in? Yes, you and I are part of the animal kingdom. <laughs> Not very neat. Eh? What can we do? There are so many types of animals. Great idea. We can subdivide the animals further. That is exactly what the scientists thought. 
So the scientists made a subgroup called phylum. Animals with a backbone were called vertebrates and animals without a backbone were called invertebrates. Has a backbone? Vertebrate. No backbone? Invertebrate. Vertebrate, invertebrate. Backbone, vertebrate. No backbone, invertebrate. Invertebrate. Hold on. I'll soon get tired of repeating this. There are so many of them. Yep, we humans have a backbone too. This is what a snake, a bird, a fish and we have in common. Do you know we can classify the vertebrate animals further? Not just animals, but each kingdom is divided into phylum. Phylum is further classified into many classes that's divided in order, then family and finally genus and species. Easy there pal. Think of this. Kids prefer candy over fresh green salad. Kingdom, phylus, class, order, family, genus, species. We already know that kingdom animal has phylum, vertebrate and invertebrate. Next comes class. Vertebrates are divided into five classes. Mammals, vertebrates that give birth to young, care for them and feed them on milk, have fur or hair on their skin. Birds, covered in feathers, many can fly, lay eggs. Fish can breathe underwater with gills, have scales on their bodies. Amphibians are born in the water and grow with gills. When old, they get lungs and can live both on land and in water. Reptiles are born on land, have dry scaly skin. Whoa, that's a lot to classify and learn. <laughs> Not quite that much too. Let's revise. What are the five classes of vertebrates? Very good. That's a mammal. You are right about birds. That's the fish. Amphibians. That's it. Masters of water and land. Yes, reptiles. Wonderful. You have a great memory. Oh my God. Where do you think we are in it? You wish would be nice to fly. I wouldn't have minded swimming like a fish. Me neither. I don't want to be a frog or a crocodile. Now tell me what we really are. Yes, mammals. And in further detail, we are of the order primates. Family, hominidae. Genus, homo and species sapiens. Oh no, not again. <laughs>